10 years of waiting has an end. During the Arduino Day last week, Arduino officially released the beta version of its all-new IDE, which should give us all the features of a modern development environment, without the hassle of a modern development environment. Too good to be true? Let's have a closer look. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. In 2005, the Arduino project started. The IDE only supported their own products, which were based on 80 mega chips. When I got my first Arduinos in 2013, the IDE still was more or less the same and still only supported 80 mega chips. Then came the ESP8266 and Ivan Grokotkov. He developed the support for this new chip in the Arduino IDE. At first it was pretty clumsy, but a few years later the Arduino IDE was adapted and could now support other MCUs. Which was desperately needed also for the Arduino company, because they started to use all sorts of MCUs in their own products. All these changes were in the background. The look and feel of the IDE did not change. Because it was and still is easy to use and all the cheap China boards, it was more popular than ever. Most other IDEs are proprietary and only support the chips of a particular supplier. This is the reason why I still use the Arduino IDE on this channel. Many professional developers made fun of the Arduino IDE because of its limited capabilities and went on to more elaborated products like Platform I.O., Visual Micro and others. But also fans like me want a more powerful Arduino IDE. But what is a powerful IDE? According to Wikipedia, an IDE should support syntax highlighting, code completion, refactoring, version control, debugging, code search, visual programming, language support, attitudes across different computing platforms. I would prioritize the list and remove syntax highlighting, visual programming and language support from priority one. Version control is also not too crucial for makers because most of us do not work in teams. But I would add the support for different MCU families like ATmega, Espressive or ARM. This list is not very long and the current IDE already fulfills some points. It runs on several platforms and supports different MCU families for example. So let's download the new version and crank it up. You find the download link just a little below the standard IDE. There are versions for Windows, Linux and Mac. So we can already check the cross-platform feature. The installation is simple as always and it can be installed in parallel to the existing IDE. So no risk to check it out. It uses the same libraries and sketch directory if you want. I choose a different one to be safe. For the test I will use the currently available version 2.0 beta 4. For a direct comparison we run both IDEs in parallel. Left is the current IDE and right is the new one. Yes, the new looks very similar. The same color scheme, the same menus and even the serial monitor is at the same place. I assume the developers did not want to rock the boat. Three differences are visible. Here we have an additional menu bar, they use a different font and the board selection is no more hidden. If you do not like the colors, you get the possibility to change them. If you fear you will hurt your eyes with a bright screen, as one of my young viewers wrote, you can select a dark theme. I keep the light theme for comparison. And because when I was young, my parents warned me that I would lose my sight if I read books with a torch instead of sleeping. You see, each generation has its fairy tales. The syntax highlighting is more or less the same in both versions. Nothing to write home about. Other IDEs are more colorful. 
but this feature is not essential for me. The board selection is similar to what we know. There is a significant difference though. No boards are pre-installed. If we want to use an Arduino Uno, for example, we first have to install it with a boards manager, as well as all other boards we need. As usual, non-Arduino boards need the addition of a JSON file in the Preferences tab. No changes here. So let's program a little to see if we have other improvements. To keep it simple stupid, we modify our blink sketch and shift the pin toggling into a function. By the way, do you know who invented the KISS principle? It was Kelly Johnson, the leader of the famous Skunk Works department, which created spy planes like the U-2, the SR-71 Blackbird and the first stealth bomber. We start with typing void toggle pin parenthesis. Now you see the first difference. The parenthesis is automatically closed. Cool. But no proposal or auto-completion. Only automatic parenthesis closing. Disappointing. This is what I thought before I discovered this little tick mark in the Preferences tab. Pay attention, it seems to get lost every time you restart the IDE. Now it works as expected and proposes commands and variables. Very nice. This for sure helps to gain speed and accuracy for my future programming. There are still glitches. For example, serial print is not yet recognized. Also, auto-ident as well as auto-format usually do not work. Let's hope they will clean out these teething problems of this baby before the first official release. And auto-completion behaves differently for different boards. If we select an Arduino Leonardo or an ESP32, it proposes in a different format. For me, the first format is more productive. So we can tick another feature. Code completion exists, but still needs some work. Let's check the renaming of variables or functions. I add a variable called toggle. Now I want to change the variable name to change. I search for toggle and hit this arrow to replace it with change. Unfortunately, it proposes to change all lines with toggle, not only the variable toggle. If I press whole word only, it only shows the occurrences of the variable and I can replace them one line after the other or hit replace all. So renaming is somehow supported, but not much different than in the old IDE. Visual Micro, for example, knows the context of the variable I want to rename. So the chance you change something by accident is much smaller. Okay. Now we want to compile and upload the sketch. The same buttons are still here. But first we have to select the board and the COM port. Because I already installed support for the ESP32, we can select other board and port and select the ESP32 dev module. I do not know why it still is not happy and shows an exclamation mark though. And we get another warning. Let built in is not declared. This is expected because this variable should be declared in the boards file, which is not done for the chosen ESP32 dev board. So we have to declare it here in the sketch. After its definition, the wiggly lines disappear, but unfortunately many others appear. All of them are wrong. If we hit upload, the sketch compiles without error. Uploads and the LED blinks. No need for wiggly lines. Let's quickly compile the sketch for the Arduino Uno. The COM port is shown and we can select the Arduino Uno. We even can comment LED built-in because the boards.txt for the Uno contains the definition. Hit upload and the LED blinks. You see, we can easily switch between the two boards. These definitions even remain intact after a restart. Cool. Let's quickly check if the libraries work and install the bread and butter SSD 1306 library from Adafruit. Unfortunately, it does not work and creates an error message. 
The library's directory structure was created, but no files were added. A disaster! If I select the original Arduino IDE directory for the sketches and the libraries, we can use all installed libraries, but we still cannot install new ones. Did I forget something important? Serial console, of course. We add a few print statements to our sketch and hit Upload. And really, we see the output as expected. Only if we hit Upload when we use the serial monitor, we get an error message. Just ignore it. For several reasons, it is too early for me to talk about the debugging feature. Only very few boards are supported, for example the Nano BLE. Unfortunately, this board has no SWD pins to connect to the debugger. You have to saw the wires to test pins. Not very professional. Not a lot of documentation for the debugging feature exists. No ESP32 support. Arduino said they would not provide this support and leave it to the community to provide it. If I extrapolate the many issues and the current state of the IDE development, I do not feel it would be a good usage of my time to try to use the debugger. So let's check what we expected and what we got. Comparing all features, there are only two main differences between the old and the new IDE. Code completion and debugging. Both were on our wish list, but unfortunately we still have to wait till they are ready. For the ESP32 debugger, probably even longer. In my professional life, I have to assess projects. When I'm asked for predictions for future performance, I look at a team's past performance. This IDE project started in October 2019 as the Pro IDE and is now 1.5 years old. So the chance we will get a stable and usable version with the promised features in the next half year is not very high and would be a pleasant surprise. Holidays in August in Italy included. But I love to be wrong in this respect. Still, I like the idea that Arduino invests time and money into this new IDE and I donated my $50 hoping that some of you will also support them. After 15 years, the Arduino IDE deserves a renewal. And please, if you start to use it, report the bugs you discover. This is the most valuable contribution during this phase of development. This was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.